Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about why I feel developers never seem to listen. And I'm going to start off straight away by saying that I don't think it's the developers that have a choice of whether to listen, like, at all. Because you could say, oh, I want to see this mode in this game. And I don't even think the developers even see it or even... I don't think they have the opportunity to acknowledge a lot of it. Because, for an example, with Star Wars Battlefront, the third instalment of the game did get put forward to EA for them to develop. And they rejected it. They said, no, we're not making this game. And if you think about it, they have just, alongside DICE, released Battlefield 2042. And they have other games that they're working on and stuff. And when you compare Star Wars Battlefront 3 and, like, everyone kicked off about monetization and stuff in the previous titles. So when it comes to number 3 they're probably not going to be able to get away with monetizing it so heavily. So they try and steer clear of that sort of stuff because it's not going to make that much money. So when it comes to a Star Wars Battlefront 3 and you compare it to something like Battlefield 2042, the Battlefield fans haven't been rattled anywhere near as much as the Star Wars Battlefront fans have. So EA can get away with saying to DICE, right, you need to put a lot of monetization foundations into the game. And you need to have this sort of stuff ready. So something like Specialists comes into Battlefield 2042. And then the players warm to the idea and, oh, this is Specialists. And then new season passes come out. And alongside seasons, you have new Specialists and everyone wants to get their hands on them. Because they have cool powers and stuff. Like all these different abilities and everything. So players get hyped and then they realise, oh, these characters cost us £8 each. They're going to go and buy them because they look cool and they want them. So something that's going to make money is going to be prioritised over something that isn't. And I don't think they would have got away with too much monetization in Star Wars Battlefront 3, so EA straight up rejected it. I feel the same thing happened with Titanfall, because Titanfall 1 and 2, great games, absolutely amazing games. They just never really took off. Then all of a sudden, it was around the time where BRs were very, very saturated. I mean, they still are now. But when every company and their dogs wanted to get involved in the development of a BR game, EA released Apex Legends. And that was the replacement for Titanfall 3. But now, I don't think there's any possibility of a third Titanfall game ever happening because of Apex Legends. It's already a billion dollar franchise. Like The game itself is worth over a billion dollars. So the CEO, the higher-ups, the investors and everything for EA see all that money flooding in. They're like, why would I work on a Titanfall 3 when it ain't going to make as much money as Apex Legends makes? I'm just going to carry on making half-assed content for Apex because I know people are going to be stupid enough to buy it. So I just I don't feel the higher-ups and the investors and stuff see the returns or the possibility. Developers don't have a chance to listen as they're constantly being pressured to make things that are going to bring a, like a return back and make a load of profit. Another one was, there was a game that I played a few years back now. It was called World of Fishing. I've been looking for a game similar for years and I can't find one. Basically, it was a sea fishing game. And like the developers, they didn't have a choice to listen. Because I would have asked them to keep the game open. If I had a way to raise funds for them, I would have kept that game running. But there was no way for the developers to listen and cut some things out of the game and make it cheaper to run or anything like that. Because it was the people that wanted the money, wanted to make all the profits and stuff. They just couldn't. The game closed down due to a lack of funding. They didn't make enough money. But that game was amazing. Sea fishing, you get your own boat, you go out, you catch huge fish. There was so much to it. So many different areas you could explore, so many different fish you could catch, and there's nothing similar in terms of sea fishing. But the game got closed down due to a lack of funding, and then if like anyone was to say, oh, could you come back and make another game? They're not going to be able to do it, so the developers can't listen. With Titanfall, with games that are even already out, like Cyberpunk, people could put forward, I want to see this in the game. The devs don't get a chance to ever listen to that sort of feedback. They can obviously jump on Reddit and look through Twitter and stuff and they can see what players are wanting, but they have to go through all their higher ups and say, do you feel this is a good idea? And then if they're being money hungry at the time, they're just going to reject it straight away. 
So I really don't think it's anything to do with the developers at all. Why all the game modes and stuff that players ask for don't get put into the games? Like, do you really think the developers that have worked on Battlefield 2042 would have kept a scoreboard out of the game? I just feel it was a function that wasn't going to make money. It wasn't worried about too much by the people that were higher up in EA. So they were just like, oh, don't worry about it. You're going to make sure that you've got the specialists ready to milk that money. You can work on all that stuff later. Because I do believe they're working on a scoreboard for Battlefield now. And lifetime stats and all that sort of stuff. But it just wasn't ever implemented in the first place. And I think that was probably because of the higher ups. And you see this sort of stuff all the time. Like with Ubisoft. Developers have been fighting back like verbally anonymously a lot of the time because they obviously don't want to lose their jobs. But they've been trying to like put out and get it spread that they don't want anything to do with NFTs. But you've got Eves who's sitting at the top and he's just like, no, this is just the beginning. I want more NFTs. I see the profit potential. And obviously CEOs and all the higher ups just see profit. They only ever see money. So I feel that's a big problem in gaming. That's why a lot of the AAA titles are how they are. They come out broken, they lack in content, because it's all just to do with the money. But I don't feel it's the developer's fault, and that's why I feel the developers can't actually listen to us, because they need to get all their projects greenlit. They need to get approval from the publishers. And with a game as big as Star Wars Battlefront 3 getting turned down, they said it was an issue with licensing or something like that, but... They could get that if they really, really wanted it because they already have Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2. There's no way they're not going to be able to get the licenses. So I feel it would just cost them too much to get hold of the licenses. So they've just straight up said, no, can't be bothered. We're possibly not going to make as much money. So we're going to scrap it. I don't like your idea. Get a fuck out of my office or something like that. So what we're going to do is wrap the video up now. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it.